All right, all right. Good morning. Happy Wednesday, the last Wednesday of February. Uh, gosh, revisit. Uh, Monday, we did the glute focus workout. We had a little more of that core and more series happening. Uh, today, we're going to focus on the quads and the calves. However, we also are going to do lots of other things, but I would say that today's intent would be quads and calves. Uh, so we need to get that party started soon. We definitely have up body combos um, And as people are experiencing the gym and hopefully a little bit online Hopefully you've noticed just a small rhythm change per se again I didn't change my style of training But just a little rhythm change when it came to some warm-ups and some uh, circuits So today we have quads and calves as a focus but I want to get it started early. We're going to get our squat press combo with all of our movements to get that body ready to go. Sorry, I said squat press, squat calves. And when we do the calves, this circuit, your calves are technically straight leg calves for your gastrox. Later on, I want the wall sit seated calf, uh, and you'll see that when you get there. Um, sometimes people do it, and sometimes they don't. When you do your squat calves, whether you want to have body weight or have a little bit of weight or more weight, you got your squat, your hips, 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 glutes, 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 eyes, 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 and then separate that calf raise. We've done it before, okay? When you're ready, 20 slow squat calves is 10 revolutions. So it's going to be 10 squats and 10 calves. Throughout the circuit, you can change your feet width a little wider, a little narrower. Maybe you have light weight, maybe you have heavy weight. Maybe the weight is up on your body. Maybe the weight is down between legs. But I would definitely love the load, L-O-A-D, to increase. 20 squat calves. That's always going to be 10 revolutions. And we're going to do it five times, actually. So it is 100 total reps or 50 at each. After your first set of 20 squat calves, you got your 20 standing scissors. You'll potentially not do them again today. Standing scissors is dynamic lengthening of your hamstrings, your glutes, your back. You're using your legs and your arms via your shoulder and hip joint. So, Standing scissors isn't just you flopping around, it's dynamic lengthening. 20 standing scissors. Again, you'll potentially not do it again today. Breathe and focus. Again, Monday we had a glute focus day. You had core and more and upper pushing and lower pulling, blah, 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 blah. Five sets of 20 squat calves, but we're going to go through our movements to get warm. Again, you can change your feet width, so you have a regular squat, feet are shoulder width apart. You have a wide squat, feet are simply wider, narrow squat, but I want the calf raise. And when you do two movement exercises, which is not the theme today, but when you do them, each movement doesn't affect each other. So your squat doesn't affect your calf raise, and your calf raise doesn't affect your squat. And those are two movement exercises. Set two, 20 squat calves, and then 20 standing runners. Remember, standing runners, dynamic mobility. Multi-joint motion. Multi-muscle activation is the word dynamic in the fitness industry. Elbows to knees, not knees to nose. Get them up, 20. Standing, runners, breathe and focus. And you're gonna work, and you're gonna work. And again, as this warm-up workout circuit progresses, maybe the weight changes on your squat press, Maybe you're changing your feet a little bit. Round three, 20 squat calves. And then we're gonna do the infamous Jack LaLanne's, which is really funny whenever I see people in person, they're like, when do we start doing those? Like, well, I used to give them a long time ago when I would do boot camps at a rack gym. That'd be a very common warm up. 
And then, as trainers do, and as you guys experience so many times, you, know, you come in, you're running the treadmill for five minutes, or sunshine, we get on as we come a bike and put the heater next to them during winter and pedal for five or eight minutes. And so our warm ups just became more get out of bed, get on the cardio machine, and then you get back home, and it's all about dynamic movements. Set three, 20 squat calves and your 20 jack lanes. You can play with your feet width on jack lanes. The wider the feet, the higher the stretch. It goes up your hamstrings. The narrower the feet, the lower the stretch. It goes down your hamstrings. And notice I use the word stretch. You are dynamic stretching on your jack legs, whereas stiff like a dentist is dynamic lengthening. You're supposed to have more load on the stiff leg of deadlift and a little bit more of a relaxed position on your jack leg. A little bit more. Round three was your 20 squat calves with your 20 jack legs. Again, we have five rounds. Round four, again, maybe you can increase weight. Toes, if you have a two by four or some plates you can stand on, not your kitchen plates, weight plates, I would say if you want to put your toes on something, you can, but don't get something too big because you still got to squat. But you realistically could get your toes or the front balls of your feet on something if you wanted to. 20, squat, calves, 10, revolutions. And again, when you do a straight-legged calf, it's your gastroc, the bubble, the one you can see. The one that people make fun of me for having little chicken legs. However, they do kind of help you jump higher, run faster. <clears throat> Whereas later on, it'll be our soleus, that underneath calf supports load and impact. And that'll be later on. After your 20 squat calves, again, we got to warm up a little bit. You got your 20 stationary reverse lunges. You will not do these again today because these are hamstrings, glutes. Primarily, I know you get some quads, but we're doing them to warm up our hip, joint, knee, joint, ankle, joint, right? Get those joints ready to go. 20 total alternating stationary reverse lunges. And maybe, I mean, it'd be, I'd be crossing my fingers, maybe you got a little lucky on Monday by getting those hamstrings and glutes. You might actually feel those stationary reverse lunges with all those hamstrings and glutes we did. Round five when you get there is your last set of your 20 squat calves. So the squats are definitely a leg warm up, quads, hammies, glutes, but we're focusing on the straight legged calves. Later on we'll focus on the seated calf position during a wall sit. And of course, I say the word wall sit. It kind of goes with the Planking we did on on uh, Monday. Twenty squat calves for the fifth and last time. Hips, 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 hips. Glutes, glutes. They should always turn on. Eyes, posture. You're looking out in front of you. Don't look down. Don't look up. Thighs. It's a leg exercise, not a back exercise. When you get done with the twenty squat calves, twenty stationary. Lateral lunges. Again, I want to get those joints warmed up. I need your body ready for some load and maybe some impact later on. Your quads need to turn on more today. Your calves. And we got plenty of our body coming your way. <clears throat> Breathe. Breathe. 20 total. Stationary, lateral, lunges, step, load, L-O-A-D, and push. Step, load, and push. And I'm going to start talking about the next circuit again, not so you go faster. You just did 200 reps. And again, I, I know you're used to it. I know you've heard it. Remember, some people, that is a great start 
to their fitness and strength adventure and they need to be done after that and it might have taken them five minutes longer. That was a good start to a workout. Unfortunately, but thankfully, you guys love more. So, circuit two is gonna be a super set of chest. Chest flies is a pulling exercise and chest push, of course, is a pushing exercise. Your flies, you have to lay on something unless you happen to have a cable fly machine or a machine, or cable fly or a machine. And then pushing, you can push with chest presses laying on something, push-ups, different tools. We've done these things. Your chest flies are going to be 25 down by 5. Boo. And your chest pushing, you have an 8 to 12 rep range. You can do 8, you can do 9, you can do 10, you can do 11, you can do 12. Remember, if I have my hands on you, I get to control all the weights. So try to maintain load and motion. 25 down by five chest pulling, chest flies, and then you have your eight to 12 push. Like we've been doing lately. If you know what to do, and you wanna ignore me and turn on some music, rock and roll. I didn't say go fast. Here we go. 25 chest flies, big, slow, wide, shoulder blades start, and they cause the width of the exercise. It's not that it has to be super wide, it's just the shoulder blades cause the width of the exercise. And chest flies is a single joint chest pulling exercise. So your shoulder joint is the only joint that is moving, whereas a chest press is a multi-joint motion with your shoulders and elbows. <clears throat> so your elbows should not be bending and straightening. 25 down by five on your chest pulling. Always eight to 12 on your chest pushing. And then last but not least, you're always gonna do 20 upper body motion abs, which means your lower body is not moving. But there's very little changes. You can adjust your fly position, you can adjust your push-up position or chest position, and you can adjust your upper body motion abs as much as you wish. I didn't say go fast, it's just definitely a circuit. You can turn the dial up a little bit if you want to. Round one, 25 chest fly, eight to 12 chest push, and then 20 upper body motion abs, means your lower body is not moving. Sit-ups, you have different body and leg positions, toe touches, jackknives throughout the gym. Your lower body does not move. Always 20. So turn the dial up. Your chest flies 25 down by five. Your chest push is always a rep range of eight, 12. And that's based on the position you're putting your body in and the load you can handle and eventually the burn you're gonna get. Your abs are always 20. That's gonna give you like 45 seconds to 60 seconds rest on your chest. Five rounds. Get it done, please. Round two. Maybe you're already there, maybe you're not. 20 chest flies is a little bit less. Eight to 12 chest pushes. Always 20 abs. Again, you can turn that dial up. You can turn the dial down if you want to. Didn't say lift fast. You don't have to rest. You can control your high tempo. Maintain load and motion. Get after the same. We have a chest circuit. Later on, we'll have a back circuit. And we have two of the 
wall, sit, quad, calf parts, you'll see. Again, just a little different rhythm to our workouts, the last couple workouts and moving forward. <clears throat> when you get to that push, you could choose any position you want. You can lay on something for chest presses. You can do push-ups. You got hands and feet on the floor. You got your hands up on something. You got your feet up on something. You got TRXs, lots of different positions. Your chest flies, you have to lay on something unless you're going, you know, unless you have a cable or a machine. Always 20 upper body motion abs means your lower body is not moving. You can keep your legs in the air, one leg or both legs for toe touches. You can lay on the ground. You can lay on a ball. You can lay on a bench. You got legs straight, knees bent. Lots of different body and leg positions. Sit-ups, like I've said before, they get a bad rap for how much you've done them in your life. Change your body position. If you're at the gym, you got decline benches, you got your jackknives, you have stability ball abs. Again, talk about upper body motion abs where your lower body isn't moving. There's a lot more movements when you can have the lower body. Round two is your 20 chest fly, your 8 12 push. Again, I don't mind if you have controlled high tempo, high pace. Like Monday, high load and high motion. You can turn that dial up. Round three is 15 on your chest fly. You got your eight to 12 on your push and your third set of your abs. Remember today I did say the focus was on quads and calves. We have plenty of them coming your way. The good thing about quads and calves is they burn easy. They turn on and burn easy. Whereas Monday glute hamstrings, you gotta focus on them more. It requires more load and motion. Our quad calves are gonna burn early and often. So quads, calves, chest, back, abs today. Round three, 15 chest flies, eight to 12 push, 20 on your abs. Chest flies, shoulder blades cause the motion. Shoulder blades start the motion on all, almost all that body exercises for the most part. And then the shoulder blades cause the width of the exercise. Again, it doesn't have to be wide. Your elbows don't bend and straighten, so it's wider than a press. Hopefully by this third set, that push is getting a little bit harder. The flies, the pushes, it's a super set of chest. Day like today, no, no big changes. Mix up your legs, you got legs straight, knees bent, feet wide, feet narrow, one leg straight, one leg bent. You can have those legs up either on your own accord, you can lay your legs up on a stability ball. As long as your lower body isn't moving, it's an upper body motion out. You can have your body laying on anything, and you can have your legs doing whatever they want to do, as long as they're not moving. Round three, 15 chest flies, eight, 12 push, 20 on your abs. Good job for those ISO penguins. Very impressive, that's an upper body motion ab core. I'm not gonna complain about that. When you get there, again, you might be there already, but it better be because of your pace. Round four, 10 chest flies, eight to 12 on the push, and again, 20 on the abs. I want you to turn the dial up. 
tempo. Control that tempo, but it can be high. Make sure your load is high, motion is maintained. 10, chest fly. 8 to 12, push. Always 20 abs. Breathe, work, it's Wednesday. Today, I'm not gonna have a bunch of progressions, right? We just had a subtle number change in the fly. You're pushing success. The reps are based on what you can handle. The up body motion abs are simple. You've done them thousands of times. done the last several workouts, you heard the word core more. Today we have abs. You've done lots of core. Monday you had core and more warming up, working out with the glutes. You had your planks throughout the whole workout. Last Friday you had all those hips and all alternating reps on the pushing and pulling. And again, you had a core middle. We had abs at the end, but really we haven't done a lot of formal abs. Round four, 10 chest fly, eight, 12 push, 20 abs. You have the one more round to go. You got your five fly, your eight, 12 push, and your 20 on the abs. And we have our first of two quad calf exercises to do. When you do those flies, shoulder blades cause the width of the exercise. Chest pulling. The combo of chest pushing keeps that burn alive. And then of course your up body motion abs get after a little bit. Last round, five flies, eight to 12 push. 20 on your abs. Again, we'll have the back version coming soon. But we have a little quad calf middle and a quad calf end to our workout today. That load, that word load, is either physical weight that you can touch and hold, or it's time under tension. When I say that tempo is high or controlled high, each motion has its own load potential and time under tension. So two, two and a half, three second reps, those are all good durational reps. You start dipping down in the under twos, that's going to turn the agility plyometric, things like that. Why don't you go dine over there, Rob? <laughs> I'm gonna start talking about the next circuit so we can jump right into it. It's a six minute time circuit. And if we have time at the end, we'll do another six minutes or whatever you're willing to give me. Six minutes time. Every minute you're on and off the wall. It's six minutes no matter what. There's no stopping the clock, okay? 
The kicker, when you're on your wall sits, which we've done a million times, you've got your isometric non-moving quad legs, but I want you to do your calves. You can either keep your heels up on an isometric calf, which they're gonna cramp, or you can do your concentric calves. So, I'm not as focused on the wall sit as I am on the seated calf position. That's gonna be a minute. And then your combo, you can either do narrow squats, stationary forward lunges. I would even throw in there jump squats if you want more of a plyometric. One minute wall sit calves. I want the seated calves. One minute of your dynamic quad exercises and you have three rounds. I am not turning off the clock. So if you need to take a break, take a break. It's six minutes. Are you ready? Let's go. You're in the wall sit position. And again, the focus is that wall sit position. However, I want the seated calves. And you've heard me talk about it so many times as an option. The wall sit is an isometric, non-moving contraction exercise. The second greatest force you put on a muscle exercise so your legs are gonna work on the wall sit. You've already experienced that a million times. But if you can't do the seated calf, then you adjust the wall sit a little bit. Again, you either keep your heels up or you can move them up and down. One minute wall sit calves, and then hopefully you can grab weight. It's okay if you can't. You got either narrow squats, stationary forward lunges or jump squats as a combo. Five, three, two, one, let's go. You're on either narrow squats or stationary forward lunges. Now it's not a race, six consecutive minutes. You know your legs are gonna take a beating between the wall sit and the dynamic legs. The calves are gonna be there because of the three one minute wall sit calves. And again, I'm dabbling so you can see. There's not a lot of changes. You got your narrow squats and your stationary forward lunges. Hopefully you're able to maintain load. And again, this first round, there's not any breaks, right? There is no formal break so you're gonna lose a little time in between. Five seconds, you're back on the wall. Three, two, one, back on the wall. Shake it off if you need to. Remember, the focus is on the calves, so adjust your wall sit. Six consecutive minutes. So now I can say, oh yeah, hey, we're doing our quads and our calves. Wall sits, you got your regular, your wide, your narrow, but the focus is on our calves. Six consecutive minutes. Your combo, narrow squat, stationary forward lunge. You got your jump squat. And if you can safely get on and off the ground or safely sit on something, you can do your ISO quads, which is seated quads. Again, if you can safely get into position. In three, two, one, on the legs, off the wall. Stationary forward lunges, dynamic quad focused exercise. Narrow squats, dynamic quad focused exercises. Jump squats, more of a plyometric. And again, if you can sit on a bench or get on and off the ground safely and do your seated ISO quads, that would be cool. On a time circuit, I didn't want to formally give that, but now that you're on the middle part of the sucker, you can understand why you might need to do that. Ten seconds, you're back on the wall one more time. Three, two, one, shake it off, you're back on the wall. 
Remember, I want seated calves. So notice my body went up a little bit. I want the seated calf position. And of course, the more I can bend my knees, the lower the wall sit, the more you're gonna get that soleus muscle. Worst case scenario, if your legs are cooking, like mine are, you can just stand tall and do your regular calves. I know you already did them today. Again, I know it feels weird. I know you're burning. The nice thing is you've done this, uh, this is our 147th workout, I think it is, with me. So you know when I say calves, we're trying to get our calf muscles. Quads, we're trying to get our quad muscles. 10 seconds and you're off the wall. And again, if you have the opportunity and ability to do your ISO quads, do two, one, off the wall. Again, either stationary forward lunges or narrow squats, jump squats. And if you have that ability, you can get on a bench or on the ground for your ISO quads. <sighs> Told you they were gonna burn. <laughs> Again, I apologize if you forgot what ISO quads were and you wanted to see them. It wasn't my ultimate intent on that one today. However, you would be sitting on something. It looks like you're gonna do a V-up, but you don't do a V-up. Five seconds, end of circuit. Three, two, one, and relax and breathe. Holy smokes. Big deep breath. Again, that was a little bit of controlled pace and tempo, right? We didn't have any rest formally. And if we have time at the end, we're going to do that one more time. Yes, you're welcome. And of course, if you need to leave at any time, nothing will imbalance you on that part. The next circuit, it's going to sound like the first circuit, you got your trap rows, 25 down by five on your trap rows. You'll lay on something for your lat pullovers, unless you have a lat pull down machine. And then you have your hip motion abs, which I'm gonna open the doors to anything where your legs are moving. Reverse crunches, V-ups, slow scissors, slow runners, hanging abs if you have the tool. All righty, 25 down by five, on your rows. Last Wednesday, my days are right. <laughs> Last Wednesday, we did the right side row circuit. Or maybe it was last Monday. I don't know, my days are all messed up right now. We did the single arm rows. Today we have the double arm rows. And again, if you have the machines, you've got cable rows, machine rows, TRX rows, again, tools. You can change your position per se, but outside of that, bent rows, you get low, you stay low in your row. 25 down by five, you've got your eight to 12 on your pullovers. Again, this should sound very familiar. And then 20 on your hip motion abs. This should take us to like 646, 47, something like that. And if you have time to do one more part of the quads and calves, awesome. If you don't have time, awesome. We're just gonna do the same thing. Again, I would take any time you have at the end. All right, round one, 25 rows. You've got your eight to 12 pullovers. For the most part, you're laying on something on your lats unless you have a lat pull down machine. Your hands come from above you on a lat. Your hands come from in front of you on a trap. And there's more positions and tools on your trap rows. And again, when you get to your abs, anything where your legs are moving, Reverse crunches, V-ups, 
windshield wipers, scissors, slow runners, swimmers, horizontal scissors. Now I know a lot of those touch on the core too. Hanging abs, you can have the rowing chair, you can have straps, you can hold on to something firm, but that's where you're vertical and your legs are moving. Technically, reverse crunches get a lot more abs versus hanging abs. However, for people with really bad lower backs, hanging abs are very good. People that have bad shoulders, sometimes elbows, hanging abs are bad and hard. So it's all about turning on your abs. Round one is your 25 rows, your eight to 12 pullovers, your 20 on your abs. Round two, 20 on your rows, it's a little bit less. Eight to 12 on your pullovers, always 20 abs. Remember, when you know what to do, human nature says you're gonna try to do a little bit more, a little bit quicker. I don't mind the controlled high tempo. I definitely welcome high pace. You could use the word intensity, even though it doesn't feel like an intense circuit. Turn that dial up. I've given you guys a couple opportunities the last two weeks to, if you know what to do, mute me, crank up the tunes, rock and roll. Go get some. Trap rows. Don't get me wrong, you're not going fast, but trap rows is a smoother, smaller motion, kind of like a chest press, even though it's a pulling exercise. The position is what gets people in trouble because of that get low, stay low, bent row position. Lat pullovers, unfortunately, you have to lay on something. It has a longer lengthening component, so you have to be more focused on that lat pullover like the chest fly, right? And then you're gonna have the abs. Again, I don't wanna say they're quicker, but scissors and runners are different than windshield wipers and reverse crunches and V-ups. So the circuit might be a little diverse for people based on what you choose. Round two, 20 trap rows, eight to 12 pullovers, 20 on your abs. Work, you guys, that's work. It's Wednesday, you came, you saw, you conquered with a nice little squat calf warm up movement circuit. We've done our chest and our abs. Here we are on our back and our abs. We have that six minute quad calf middle. And then at the end, I would take anything two minutes, four minutes, or six minutes one more time. And of course, that's coming up shortly. If you don't have time, that's okay. Nothing's gonna imbalance you. And maybe you save it for later on as a quick break between your phone calls. It's just a six minute quad calf circuit. Round three, when you get there, 15 trap rows. It's a little bit less. Eight to 12 on your pullovers. If you were at the gym, I've got the cable row and lap pull down cables next to each other. That's how the machine is made. I've got the machine ones somewhat next to each other. You've got millions of ways of doing your rows. You have a handful of ways of doing your lats. And we've had these pace proximity circuits around for years. Round three, 15 trap rows, eight to 12 pullovers, always 20 hip motion abs. Your legs are moving some form or fashion. V-ups, reverse crunches, hanging abs, scissors, runners, swimmers, windshield wipers. 
horizontal scissors. And a little bit of work goes a long ways. You're excited. It's getting a little bit brighter out there. Sun's coming up a little bit earlier, going down a little bit later. Tell you what, though, the rain this year, holy smokes. I think January, we broke, what, a six-year-old record by, like, January 20th. <laughs> and our rainstorms of late, it's incredible. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Alrighty, I want you working. Remember, everybody's going to be in different spots. Round four, ten trap rows, eight to twelve pullovers, twenty abs. You're almost done. Remember, if you have to leave after this circuit, that's fine. Even if you have two minutes to repeat the quad calf earlier, that'd be great. I would like you to break it up in the two, the four, or the six, but I would literally take anything. Ten trap rows, eight to twelve on your pullovers, twenty on your abs. Super set at our chest today, super set at our back, two hundred abs. You have the 200 uh, leg calf warm up circuit. Six minute middle. We'll take anything at the end. Monday we had all the glutes and the hammies and the core and the more pushing and the pulling. And you have the six total minutes of planking. Reverse crunches, both legs moving, abs tight, back flat, V-ups, everything is moving. It's the hard ab, it's not necessarily the best ab. You've got sit-up scissors, hanging abs, runners, horizontal scissors. You got here so many things. As long as your abs are working, your legs are moving. A lot of do touch the core category that you've done a lot of. So if you're trying to focus on the formal ab, rectus abdominis, you've got reverse crunches, your V-ups, super slow scissors, hanging abs, windshield wipers, core, obliques, abs are great for you, runners, great and great, mobility, abs, horizontal scissors, definitely hips, core, I'm not trying to, to, to mess you up too much. When you get there, you have the one more round. Remember, you can totally be done. If you have a little more time, I'll take anything. And of course, it'll be like earlier, but I'll definitely show you those ISO quads, okay? Five rows, eight to 12 pullovers, 20 on your abs, end of circuit. And I'll take anything from one to two to six total minutes coming your way. I'll change your choices from the wall sits. You have step ups, lateral lunges, we'll have the iso quads, just to give you some other ideas. Round five, five rows, eight to 12 pullovers, 20 on your abs. If you're gonna leave, say goodbye, have a wonderful day. If you're gonna stick around, I'll start that timer shortly. Again, it's, it, when these workouts, 
I know they feel slow. I, I get it. I know that. However, pace is high when you don't rest. Tempo can be controlled high. Load. You can really focus on annihilating your muscles. If I have the chance to give you your weights on the lats and the trap combo, you know it would not have been very light. And that's been the biggest difference, as you guys already know, between home and gym. Duration of workout. All of you guys have trained me. We tend to break that 60 minute mark, upwards of 70 minutes, and it literally is me handing you the weights versus what you have at home. I know it's hard to have a whole rack of dumbbells, <laughs> you know, a whole dang slew. All right, I'm gonna talk about it. You can leave at any time. You've got your one minute, sorry, your six total minutes of work coming up. You got your wall sit again. I'm focusing on the calves. I want you to think about the calves. Remember, you can always pop off the wall on your regular calves. You've got step ups if you have the tool, lateral lunges if you have the tool. And again, just so you see it, you got your ISO quads. It looks like a VF, but it's not. You can literally do anything and say goodbye, but if not, it's six minutes. Are you ready? Last part. Ready? Set. Go. So today, you have the 100 squat calves, 12 combined minutes of your isometric legs and your calves with your dynamic quads. And remember, these things burn. If I would have done this on the glute hamstring circuit, you would have just gotten into your back and your hips and other things. So the, the type of muscle and how it activates is why I changed the rhythm of the exercise and how you do it. Don't get me wrong, you would have gotten your glutes and hamstrings, same idea, but it would have just changed it a little bit. Remember the wall sit. If you can't do the wall sit, give me the calves. You can mix up your feet with your combo, step ups, lateral lunges, and you have your iso quads. Five, three, two, one, off the wall, and you're on to your potentially dynamic quad focus exercise. The iso quads would not be a dynamic exercise. It's an isometric ab core with a static concentric motion quad exercise. And again, I will take anything as you finish off this workout. You're back on that wall sit. Again, technically, it is six total minutes of wall sits like you did on Monday's six total minutes of calves. Relax, you're back on the wall. You are back on the wall for the wall sit calves. Monday, we did the three, two, one minute planks. Today, you have the two sets of three total minutes each on the wall sit calves. So, I didn't change it too much. <laughs> the combo changed. Now remember, doing this today, I, I, I think the calves are gonna get beat up pretty good. Be mindful of that. Ten seconds. Again, you're off the wall and you're on to either your stationary lateral lunges, step ups, or iso quads. Two, one, off the wall, step ups. If it's higher, it'll feel harder. And yes, you do get your hamstrings and glutes, but don't get me wrong, you're always going to get quads. If it's lower, hopefully it's heavier, you're going to get more quad activation. Google quad activation exercises. VMO exercises, vastus medialis, right? And you're gonna have your low, heavy step-ups. 
weight distribution and body position to determine which one turns on, but quad exercise. Ten seconds. You're back on that wall for one more wall sit calf. Six total combined minutes of that today. Two, one, on the wall. Again, shake it off. If you are annihilating your calves, stop doing your calves, right? Last one minute wall sit calves. One more dynamic Quad focused exercise. Quads, calves, chest, back, abs. You got that burn feeling. Whoa, whoa, that burn feeling. You've got that burning feeling in your quads and calves. Whoa, whoa. Two, one, relax. You're back on your dynamic leg. Last one minute of the day. Again, stationary lateral lunges, step ups. You have the choice of the iso quads, the seated position that looks like a V up on the ISO quad. Thirty seconds. All done in thirty seconds. A lot of work was done. Again, I know the workout kind of touched a little too long a time. I apologize for that. I just wanted to focus on the task at hand. Quads, calves, chest, back, abs. 10 seconds and you're all done. Five, three, two, one. Relax and breathe. Again, I know the workout stopped. What I don't want you to do is turn this thing off and go sit down and, and go, go to work. I'm gonna cool off, stretch out, get some water in your body, stretch out for a couple minutes, pat yourself on the back, and have a great, wonderful Wednesday.